Are they starting immediately? Uh, does in fact look like they are starting okay, as we perfect. get set up on uh, Final Destination. Uh, FD with Duck Hunt? <clears throat> Oh. I think I kind of agree with this, uh, like, from the perspective of Mr. E, because Fawn is so good at controlling those lanes on, like, monoplats or on the biplats. You know, just take all of those out of the equation. You're just going to be fighting your way through this onslaught of cans and clay pigeons with your sword and your wits. All the little shield juggling as well to make sure we don't get hit by the top or the bottom. The shield poking is not going to happen today. Mr. E is going to be on top of that. And honestly... The way we're playing on FD, I think it does work out in Mr. E's favor only because of the way that uh, we can really see how he's playing this matchup specifically. Where going right through the cans, we're going to be shooting me the cans, we're going to be jumping right over the clay pigeons. Fawn may get the grab, but she won't get as much of that uh, of the payoff of the damage as before. Right. Like, Mr. E will not have the opportunity to use platforms to get around these projectiles, but Fawn is not going to be able to use them defensively or offensively, Insane like we tech. see her do so often. Oh, and Mr. E just, Mr. E catches those techs all the time. Such a great, great Lucina player. And even though, you know, we typically, we typically see that, you know, Lucina does struggle a little bit against projectiles, against things, uh, maybe other sorties as well. Mystery does not care. Mm -hmm. He's maneuvering around this very beautifully. Fawn, in fact, has to be the one who make the, make the adaptation. At the very least, Fawn has taken any, any damage, so she does have a little bit of a uh, of, of, of not a little bit of life that, before <laughs> Mr. E, you know, gets to the stock. That sheriff almost getting like best employee of the year award, but Mr. E holding on to this first stock still only eight percent extra credit, basically nothing. But there we go. As I say that, the grab is coming out. Given Mr. E that uh, stage positioning, Bond <laughs> Oh, me you I'm take it. My can. Going for a tilt. There we go. Fawn again once center. off stage until Legend comes in with the forward air. Very good stuff all around. We're going to be poking the. the once again. I love the, the poking the can. Just put it back. Take it back. I don't care. All right, yeah, using these huge sweeping hitboxes of Lucina to mitigate all of this uh, this projectile pressure. Like, yes, um, Duck Hunt's projectiles are, like, very good at creating this set play, but a lot of them, you can just hit them back. You can just hit them back and destroy them. And can just send Fonto to the with that drop down back here from the ledge. Very great stuff all around for Mr. E. And again, only one more stop before it to go through like another game and hopefully take this into a revenge story into, into Melly, who's sitting very prettily in grand finals. So it's a matter of can we get through these cans? Mr. E absolutely can. Can Fawn get the adaptation? Can Fawn get the spacing? Can Fawn, you know, work uh, her way around this? Right now, it's working out very beautifully for her. Great oh. tech. All right, but Mr. E is going to get another chance to get back into center stage. Jab sends wow. up. Today I learned. Mr. I... E sends to Bazon? I see. True. <laughs> <laughs> However, I think it's mis I think what has happened here also is you're seeing Fawn play that ledge a lot more, or, um, or the very far right or far left of the stage, because you don't have that mono platform like in Smashville or, or Hall of Bastion to help you out from Mr. E, who is all over the place. Yeah, Duck Hunt, a character who is very, oh. very dependent on their like environment. And so taking all of that away has been trouble for Fawn in this game one, but she's been bringing it right back already. A little bit of a percent lead. That's huge. Pushing Mr. E all the way to the corner now, trying to read a jump, but instead it's Mr. E finding the opening here with the down air. Could be seeing a kill right here very soon. Clay Pigeon Explosion coming through. Back throw. Absolutely going to be set, probably setting up the uh, the gunman right into here, and then the click. Oh, that's so good. Oh, the <laughs> can actually going to be taking it. I think Mr. E was trying to hold in, find his way back into center stage, and that gave him some bad DI for the can. All right. In favor of Fawn going in her favor. Oh, in favor of Fawn going in her favor. Let me, let me, let me relax. <laughs> hold on. Fawn taking it over Mr. E, even though Mr. E was showcasing such good uh, counterplay to something like Cans and Clay Pigeon on a platform-less uh, stage. However, Fawn is kind of finding her rhythm, and instead of playing on a ledge, you saw her start playing very gravitated to center stage. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where she won, because now Mr. E can't, you know, you can't play on a ledge if no one's there. 
You can't play center stage because there's a gunman there on your left, there's a Kelly Clay Pigeon that's gonna be interrupting you, and there's also a can sting on the right that's gonna explode in two seconds. So once she's set up, she's set up. Yeah. And what? speaking of getting set up, we're actually coming into Hollow Bastion. Yes. Which is a very interesting pick because this is really where I feel like Fawn thrives. She is going to get the chance to set up all of the lanes here with this monoplat. But and we've seen her, yeah, really as, dominate. As we've seen before, though, the monoplats are Mr. E's uh, preferred counterpick stage. So he is going to get the chance to potentially set up shop himself in center. But he's going to he's gonna need to find his way into center first. He's going to have to find, uh, yeah, Mr. E. Already, you're seeing your showcase. You're, I'm sorry, you're seeing how Fawn plays these specific mono uh, platform maps. Can oh. she go around? She absolutely can. The air dodge should be able to help her. Oh no, I'm sorry. It didn't even need it. We had the vertical recovery for Duck Hunt. I always forget. He's such a great re has great recovery options. But once again, we're gonna be setting up on that platform or under the platform in the center stage, and Fawn is gonna be just making Mr. E kind of regret the stage choice. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Duck Hunt, one of those characters, once that they're able to get that stage positioning, they are just digging themselves in. Fawn is going to be able to oh dig her heels into this center stage and just put Mr. E in just an eternal ledge trap here. As he tries to find that... The wall. The wall! It, it, if that was Fawn instead of the Cowboy, it would have been a really good opportunity for Mr. E to actually close in this space. But... Not gonna be enough. Thankfully, instead of Fawn going in for the up smash, we did go for a down smash instead. So that means that Mr. E able to come in with the down air. Two great texts from Fawn, keeping her alive in this game as we see uh -oh. another back throw into the can. Not gonna be taking it quite yet, but getting dangerously close. Yeah, Fawn already lapping Mr. E in percent. The can almost taking it, putting Fawn in a three stock to one as we see right here. Fawn is looking prime to get her shot at revenge against Melly. Oh gosh. All right, then they're going to be taking Fawn's first stock of the day. Oh, I'm sorry, of, of, uh, of this of the day. Could you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> of, <laughs> of this game too. And it's looking like Mystery has a very big amount of climb, but I think with this less positioning we have right now, should work out great grab on the roll in. And we should be able to get an up air here. Saw the vision. Was slightly misspaced, but definitely still can be doable for Mr. E with his positioning. There we go. I Take that center stage. I also want to point out that entire time that they were on the right side of the stage, and Mr. E had the stage positioning, had the edge guard potential. The can was still in center stage. Even when you have stage control against Fawn, you do not have stage control. Not fully to take that stock, and absolutely Mr. E did. Once Fawn was uh, out of that. Oh, no way! Later. Oh my goodness. That was just clean. That was just so Ooh. clean. She Pop dropped down, too. she dropped down, stood on business, <laughs> and put Mr. E in a blast zone in two moves. That was great. I like that, that too, great. because Mr. E had been recovering like very low before yes. and doing like an instant double jump into Uppy, like to just zoom his way to the ledge. But if you're if you're gonna take your time off stage and get that low, may as well just go for a spike. That was a really good read, but uh, no, I was going to say Melly because the faint just, he's caught up. All right. But that was just a really good just instant shield from Mr. E because he could have died so quickly there. And he honestly, he was so close to bringing it back. And, and honestly, I could have seen a game three happen uh, just from how quickly he took that first, I'm sorry, that second stock into the, you know, Fawn's last stock. But Fawn stood on business. She came down ready to play. Yeah, and she's going to be ready to play as we move on into grand finals against Melly. The, Again, yeah. Like we said before, the the potential for revenge. Bro, the Mario. I'm Mario? sorry, Forrest. We we going Mario. 